Hello YouTube, this is Ben Gessel, um, just uh, here at a nearby park, and um, trying to get more into these scenery types of videos, I suppose. So, you can kind of see, get a little bit of an idea what it's like around here. In Kenmore, Forest Grin Park. So, Kind of nice to see that because we got some houses over here, other stuff. Okay, well, we could just leave it at that and call it good. <laughs> and it's just a nice little short little video. I should probably do more of these in the future. So, um, I've had some ideas recently about. Um, I guess you know the easiest way of applying this is to is probably you know, with uh, creative writing uh, stories, but it, this can also, of course, apply to video games, anything with a, anything involving a story. And the thought process goes something like this: um, I had to take a very, very, uh, I had to take a very critical. Uh, kind of a critical um, view on the video games I've played and how much actual creative content is in it and especially referring to uh, story plot um, and you know the conclusion I came to was that some of the games had great stories, or had good stories, we'll say. Others, not so much. Um, and you know, why, why is that? Well, just bear with me here for a bit. I might walk around here a little bit, as I think. We'll see, just a bit, but. You know, when you pick up a book, and you really, you've heard it's really good. You want to start reading it. Um, you get kind of immersed into it. It's great. And I know a lot of people aren't reading books as much these days, but there's a lot of other things that are still great for the mind that we're doing. So, you know, when all, this, all this pans out. I mean, reading a few less books, but doing other things are very good for the brain. It hopefully makes up for it. <laughs> like, some people have those little puzzle games I like to play. You know, we just gotta keep our minds active. Just like our bodies, you know, it's very important. So, um, but yeah, storyline. I mean, to be honest, sorry about the shaky camera here, sorry. To be honest, games like Fable, Fable had a story, but it was kind of very open-ended and not really, not really a whole lot of, meat to it. I mean, it's just a semi-open world. Not really. I mean, you had a lot of different areas like Baldur's Gate, but it wasn't a continuously open world. And I have I remember beating the bad guy at the very end. And again, it just wasn't really story. It didn't have a good story. Um, I played games like Wheel of Time that already were based on good, great stories, so that they're richer that way already. And Baldur's Gate actually was a story before it was made into a game. And I... I I definitely prefer those story-driven games. I realize that. And um, if a game is just gameplay and not a whole lot of story, you know, it's fun, I guess, but it's just a diff totally different kind of, totally different kind of thing. Um, you can see the sky is getting gradually a bit darker. Okay. I'll come clean, I'll be honest. I am trying to make not only more beautiful videos for you guys, but I'd also think that maybe this sort of thing would increase my YouTube views. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Can you blame me? But it's as pretty as not. Anyway. Of course. Of course, I'm, I would love to be able to increase my, my views on YouTube. Who wouldn't? But that's another thing, which I'll get to here in a bit. These things that, you know, people are 
accusing other YouTubers of doing to increase their views. And there's a whole bunch of them. We can get to that another. We can get to that later. It's another subject. But, but you know, sticking with the, my thoughts on stories and story-driven video games, there's so much more reason to actually play them. You know, because it's true. I mean, you could really enjoy killing a bunch of you know evil beings but let's just break down that whole combat thing as well unless you're a mass murderer unless you're murdered in real life nobody's not, I don't think any of us have actually killed anything other than like a occasional spider or mosquito so killing loses all significance it loses every bit of significance that uh, it has in real life so there's a real, there's a really strong disconnect between, of course, killing in the video game, in general, and killing in real life. I, I'm wondering. Some part of me is wondering if, if we want video games to be more like real life type stuff, we want to be more meaningful. If we should take it down more than a few notches when it comes to just endless video game killing, because again, it's just a, it's a very different kind of kind of thing is like you know we start out with pac-man and he'd get the little pellet and then he'd go eat the ghosts and things oh they killed him but then they came back to life you know but you can you see them going i'm starting with the more toward the beginning of video games and their effect on you know people that play them and i'm not talking about a video i'm not, I'm not in this video i'm not talking about mass violence in video games. That's not necessarily the only direction I'm going here. But if you think about it, if the more realistic you get, um, the more realistic the game is regarding killing, you know, people or monsters or whatever, then yeah, but it's still a video game. We still know it's very much a video game. And then, you know, you could probably think, oh, there's the Wii. There's the, actually, the like, physically going through the motions of killing something. Well, why not just take up fencing and then don't kill anyone and then get, you know... <laughs> I'm sorry, there's all these tangents. I do apologize, folks. But, um, again, if you want to make video games more meaningful, why not just have no killing, but it still has... It's very story-driven and you have to um, deal with villainous folks in other ways other than killing. <sighs> Who would have thought of that? Well, and you have to be creative. Man... Sheesh. Maybe you're surrounded by trolls and things. You're like a little ant, you know, a little tiny creature, and you can get squashed very easily by all these other creatures. And I, you know, it's an idea for a game, but it's like... The, the, okay. The, to cut the chase here a little bit... Um, yeah, it's just all about how much does it really matter? How much does it mean? It's true that, you know even for young men that are big into gaming. So for us, when we get, the older we get, you know, the older we get, the more we ask the question, and then what? And what's this all for? That was fun, but uh, what was the point of all that, you know? And then, of course, if you, if you deal with clunky gameplay, it makes it like, well, what the heck? Why, why spend time doing this? So, you know, there's just a very strong possibility they were finishing any some of these games, so, you know, that we try out. Because it's just not really that fun. Even though some other aspects of the game are pretty fun. So, you know, I mean, you can't, nobody can tell me um, this and that is that a video game. I know for myself what it is I enjoy the most. And it, it's always been story driven video games. I've always seemed to kind of been drawn to that stuff. I just. You know, I mean, after the 500th orc, what's the point? Unless it's just, you know, slashed or killed, you know, it's almost like it's just filler. Combat's just kind of filler in between the, the more enjoyable moments where you actually have a storyline or something puzzle driven or something, all that kind of stuff going on in the game. So, yeah, I mean, like, what we should be paying money for is more story driven content. Absolutely. And for all you video game companies that see this, we want story-driven content. At least many video game players. Now, you can try to, you can try to, you know, corrupt, so it's quote-unquote, corrupt younger folks, especially young men, by 
having all this meaningless combat. Uh, so you have this great story, a supposedly great story, and all this other stuff in your game, and then you just have all these monsters there for no, no good reason. You know, I mean, it's like, okay. I mean, <laughs> just unless it was actually very enjoyable to kill those things, or maybe, maybe the maybe the monsters are very hard to kill. Maybe they're fast. Maybe there are different kinds of monsters that take different types of skills to to, to kill, and then that's more enjoyable, I think. But if it's all just the same stuff over and over again, whack, 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 done. It just gets really, really tedious and boring. Or can very much easy, very easily be that way. But the early train of thought was, if video game companies just want to just want to market themselves to teenagers and young adults who, mainly young men who um, get a kick out of just endless combat like that, you can still keep making dumbed down games. And as long as they keep buying them, they'll keep buying them. But you know, and then at some point, your 15, 16, 17 year olds and so on and so forth, you know, they're gonna say enough is enough. Something is up here. You know, we're getting just crap for what we're paying, you know. So yeah, I mean, I, I sympathize absolutely with young men. I mean, this is just ridiculous. I mean, like, you know, when you, and I think of how great of a game Archon was on the Atari back in like the 80s when I was a boy, and compare it to a lot of things. I mean, a lot of things these days. We'll say, um, Oh, I don't know. Yeah, we'll say Skyrim. <laughs> Skyrim's fun because it's... I lot of things, different things you can do. But it's just kind of meaningless. I mean, after a certain... If you, if you play it for a while, you know, there's this dragon thing going on, Scandinavian stuff, but... It's the lack of storyline. And it's the, that whole huge open world thing where there's tons of things to do, quote-unquote, but there's not a whole lot of things that really really matter that much, you know. Archon was this little basic chess game, almost, that was just more interactive because you could fight these different creatures, and it worked so well. You know, it's kind of embarrassing. You take all this stuff, all this technology, all these, all this, this beefy, beefy systems to play, games like Skyrim, and it's embarrassing that they might not even be as great as Archon in a way. Now, of course, I know Archon hasn't aged very well, but, you know, it still has, for what what it is, it's just an amazing game. And so, you know, people say, oh, you know, I don't know, video games are changing, they're evolving. Yeah, anyway, no. But getting back to an early, original, an earlier train of thought I had about a storyline. You know, that's what made The Legend of Crandia so great, for instance. Although, again, the puzzles were, I think, too difficult or too obscure, you know, you have to be able to, um, be able to understand the puzzle, you know, without going to cheats necessarily. Um, yeah, um, Divinity Original Sin struck a middle ground between storyline-rich games and puzzle games, along with, and they, they actually made the battles a lot more interesting, too. So, that's great, that's why it's a story game, it really is a great game. But again, when push comes to shove, it's the story-driven games I think I like the most. And there's not really a whole lot of them that are fantasy-ish right now that are really that great, in my opinion. I could try Star Wars, KOTOR, Knights of the Old Republic. As I've been told, maybe it's a great game to, to try. But, okay, anyway. So I kind of, you know, come to most of what I want to talk about here, I think. But, um, you know, so many things that just haven't... I've realized that there's so many things that just haven't been... Uh, so many stories that haven't been told via video games. Uh, whether it's fantasy or something else. You know, there's a lot of stuff that hasn't been done. Take something as simple as Jack and the Beanstalk. If you start out, you're playing the character of Jack... And you get magic beans and all that stuff in a cutscene, right? You go to your mom, your mom's not happy. The moment that the game turns in, the moment that the cutscene stops and it turns into a video game, maybe it's where you, when you plant the seeds 
and you start going up the vine. You can make that a level in of itself. When you make up the top of the vine, that's your level two. And then that can be the whole world in of itself. And, you know, you can, you know, what, what happened, what eventually happens? Well, there's a story to Jack and the Beanstalk. He finds, what, the golden, golden goose or golden egg and take, steals it and then comes down the vine with the giant coming after him. The giant falls to his death or something. But, you know, you can take that idea and, you know, they made a whole movie about Jack's a thief, so... I don't know. I've seen this other movie that was made about Jack, based on Jack the Beanstalk, and I'm just using that as, as an example. This like things from turning straw into gold, you know, Rumpelstiltskin, you know, kind of stuff. And maybe you can't do it via magical means, or you have to find someone that can help you, you know, turn straw into gold magically, um, or you have to find some other way of doing it, or maybe, um, you know. But you know, there's just there's just a lot of these little things, and and you know, a lot of times, it wasn't really magic that made the Grimm's Fairy Tales fantasy or really made it work. Magic was kind of like a cherry, the cherry on top. It was kind of the icing on the cake. The, most of the book revolves around emotions and sympathies, and moods and memories and kind of a collective. Um, uh, your German, they talk about it. Yeah, it's kind of a German uh, conscious. Uh, you know, it's kind of like you're telling the story of all these different people that are German or thereabouts, French or whatever. You're, you're telling what they care about. You're, you're describing what they care about and their loyalties and their feelings via a story, and that's really. Along with the moral the morals and the you know the ethics in these areas, that's really what you're telling. And magic is just, it's just again, it's just a the cherry on the top. It's like the extra little supernatural thing that makes it. But it's not the thing that defines fantasy. It, the f- fantasy is doing things that you couldn't really otherwise do in real life. It's like taking your dreams to the next level, or it's like um, you know making your dreams more of a reality kind of thing but actually dreams where you can fly and stuff. It isn't the flying that's the core of the fantasy. It's the it's the story. It's the struggle. It's kind of the, you know, trying to make sense of everything in a world that's trying to, or in an area, it's making sense. Why, why is it, for instance, that, you know, wolves are so dangerous? Are they dangerous? They're not as big as bears. Um, and, you know, with, you know, again, I'm talking about the Red Riding Hood. Um, a wolf can be just a hungry dog. Can a wolf be persuasive? To get those fangs? You know, does he want to eat the little girl? Does he want to do something else to the little girl, which we won't get into? <laughs> you know? Uh, there's all these ways of looking at these things that are like, eh, okay, you know? Personally, I think I would just be happy to read about a story in the forest that involved some kind of bad guy in general. I mean, I... A bad creature, and you have to deal with the creature somehow. And you know, it took the woodsman's axe and bravery to kill the wolf. Now, the wolf, of course, the wolf wasn't a human, so there's a feeling of, oh, he's just a wild beast that was also evil and tempting Little Red Riding Hood to get lost and to eat, eat Little Red Riding Hood. And you know, there's ways to kind of lessen the seriousness of killing. Of killing, right? Oh, it's a wild beast, right? That wolf, I know, I know, the wolf can very much be like a human predator, whether it's a pedophile type predator or just someone wants to kill or whatever. I know, I, I know the connection. Um, but again, you know, killing, I mentioned that it's a very serious thing in real life. And, you know, <laughs> eh, I, again, I just think that it's might, it might be a healthy thing to kind of rethink video games a little bit. Or just say, you know, if you want to have a realistic video game or a more vivid video game or have, a, have it be more just higher quality, you probably want to scale back on, the, on the, uh, the violence. Unless you want to be a soldier and just train yourself mentally to kind of go at it, you know. That's what they do. One of the ways that they toughen up soldiers. It's kind of one or the other. 
you know. And it's a very different thing, the military thing. Where everyone says, oh, war is hell. And yeah, it is. It might be adrenaline pumping. You know, you might get shot. You might get hurt. You might, you know, kill someone. And I, I don't know what that feels like. I've never killed anyone. But that's um, it's a very different thing, of course, than if you cold, just kill someone cold-blooded, you know, kind of thing. You call it some kind of cold-blooded murder. That's a very different kind of thing altogether. Um, but still, when you kill someone, I imagine the military... And battle and war that is probably a pretty big thing still you're commanded to kill you know anyway like in you know I, I keep thinking what's the what are the uh, what are the spiritual emotional implications of uh, you know killing mass amounts of henchmen and a few bosses per game what how what impact does it have on people is it can it be a good thing? Is it a bad thing? Is it neutral? So so far I've kind of felt like it's a little bit more of a neutral thing. But it can be good because it can relieve a lot of stress. It can you know, help us kind of go somewhere else for a bit and then get back to real life. It can... And again, it's enjoyable. You can pick up your spirits a little bit. Where I think it gets to be negative is uh, anything that actually desensitizes you. And this is, again, something else that a lot of people don't realize about you know, being in the military is even if you're commanded to kill, and I don't think you're going to be spiritually accountable for that because you're commanded to kill, uh, the very act of killing can kind of desensitize you a little bit to killing. You've done it. It's like, you know, that person's life is over. You killed them, you know, and in real life. And um, so there's a lot of things that I'm sure a lot of people can say about that subject. I, I guess my thought is, again, uh, I don't know if... Um, I don't know if... Uh, <laughs> I don't know. You make your own decision on this one. I, I, I know where I stand. I think it would just at least involve maybe spending a little less time just with video games that just go on and on with dumb, you know, dumb killing. Or, you know... If you kill one or two people in a video game, that's a very good video game, uh, story-wise. Or even a handful, or smaller numbers. And if you have smaller numbers of characters that are a lot more meaningful and well-rounded and, you know, developed like a story, everything in that, everything, it means a lot more. So much, infinite. Uh, it's just no comparison with killing the thousandth troll and, you know, you have some, some story to it, but it's just something really shallow and not very meaningful. So anyway, I'm, I, I think I'm about done with this video. Uh, I'm just about done. Hopefully you guys liked what Forest Grin Park looks like a little bit. And I will catch you guys later. Take care. Bye.